So welcome in uh, question 5, still question 5 of the same paper, um, April 2022, communication skills. And as you can see, we have three questions here, question A, B, and C, and uh, on to our A. Highlight five uses of social media applications in business communication. Five uses of social media applications in business communication. The first thing we need to ask ourselves, what are these social medias? And uh, in this era, or in today's era, there's nobody who doesn't know, or there's nobody who knows nothing about social media. Because 80% of our time, or 80% of the case of the of the population in our country physically are in the social media. And examples of this social media, we can have Facebook, we have YouTube, we have WhatsApp, we have Twitter, Instagram, name them. So many. The list is then is endless. We have so many social media platforms or social media applications. So what role? Does these social media applications play, or what roles do these social media applications play in business communication? Uh, number one, when you have a close look at these uh, users, you get to see that they can, to some extent, they can be advantages if you have a close look at them. But here, yeah, our question is looking for for the users. What do we use the social media platforms to do? We use them to advertise. We use them to uh, to attract customers. We use them to contact customers. We use them to develop our brands. We use them to do our market research. And so many more. We use them to boost our revenues. There are so many reasons, or there are so many uses of social media platforms. These are just but a few. But when you start mentioning them one by one, the list can go even up to up to 20 users of social media platforms. We, we have just but a few because our question was only looking for five users, if I'm not wrong. Yes, our question is looking for five users of social media, and that is why we have five. I, I, I even put six. So number one, the first use of social media applications are number one. I have customers get customer feedback and build customer loyalty. These are three in one, three in one uses of the social media platform. For example, you can use Facebook to attract customers. You take photos or pictures of the product, post it in the Facebook and talk something about the product to attract customers. And then get feedback at the comment section. And also by interacting with the customers at the comment section, building customer loyalty. So you can use social media applications or platforms to attract customers, to get customers feedback, and also to build loyalty for your customers. That is number one, for which those are three points in one. We have number two, you can use social media platforms to do research and market research, yes. You can see what competitors are posting, you can see what prices they have, you can see what kind of messages and languages they use, and also you get a, a clue from the same. So you can use social media platforms to do market research, uh, including even the international markets, because these social media platforms are used across the globe, not only in one country or in two countries, but they're used across the globe. So long as some the post is in public, anyone can see it. So long as it's in that platform, anyone will be able to see. So you can use them to do market research or to, to increase to, to do a market research, sorry, I was confusing number three and number two. These are two different. So number three is market research, but number two, we have market reach. So the moment you use your social media platforms to, to get information, to collect data, to collect gathering information, gathering opinion, that is what we call do market research. So you use social media platforms to do market research. And as in, at the same time, you can use your social media platforms to increase your market reach. Because in the absence of these applications or in the absence of these uh, platforms, that means you could, you could just be serving people who are around you or who are around their geographical region. But the moment you start using the social media platforms like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, WhatsApp, name, name it, name them, you can be able to increase your reach. If I was only having a customer base of 20% without the social media platforms and I start using the big social media platforms, that means my customer base will grow from 20% or even up to 60, 50, 70, 80 or even 100. So those are some of the things that you need to know. 
So you can use it to increase your market reach and you can use it to attract customers and also you can use it to do a market research. And also you can use these platforms to increase revenue. How do you increase revenue? The moment you attract more customers, that means you're increasing sales. And the moment you're increasing sales, that means you're increasing revenues. So through the social media platforms, you can be able to increase your customer base. And automatically, if your customer base is increased, that means sales have increased, profits have increased, revenues have increased, name it. So you can also use those platforms to increase revenue. You can use it to develop your brand. Yes, how do you develop your brand? Through advertising, creating awareness. Talk about it to the, in the social media platforms. Post about it in the Facebook, post about it in YouTube, in Instagram, Twitter, everywhere. That is how you develop your brand. Huh? It's because it's a way of creating awareness. And because most people nowadays spend time online, you will be able to capture a good number of people. You will be able to have a good coverage when it comes to advertising, creation of awareness for purposes of developing your brand. And lastly, it can help you also keep an eye on your competitors because also the competitors that you have in the industry do post in the social media. So what do they post? How are their prices? How, what are their marketing strategies? What are their marketing tactics? Those are some of the things that you need to, to, to understand. So by the use of these social media platforms, you can also be able to track your competitors of each that can also be a benefit uh, for, your, for your business. So that is 5A. And then on to 5B, we have meaning of the term memoranda. And then after understanding the meaning, we also give the purpose. That is question B, Roman 1, and question B, Roman 2. So question B, Roman 1, we have give the meaning of the term memoranda. And the memorandum is mostly abbreviated in the business context, usually called memo, referred to as a memo, which is a short kind of a letter or a short kind of a message that is normally sent to instruct people about something or to inform people about something, whether a meeting, whether there's an occurrence that you feel your staff need to know, sometimes use this kind of a, this kind of a communication. So here we have this definition. It is a written record message or reminder, uh, and it is a type of communication that is often utilized in business. Situation, uh, mostly referred to as memo, and it is always short and simple. That is a very brief meaning or a brief definition of what a memo or memorandum, memorandum is. So this is a, communi it's a communication, it's a type of a communication media that is mostly used in organizations or it can also be used in uh, institutions, name it up. So it's normally short and simple and on point. You, it's always brief uh, because it does away with the necessary details and necessary data and so on. It just goes straight to the point and that is the reason as to it's always short, brief and simple. So what's the purpose of using a memo? Purposes of a memorandum. Why do people use memorandum? Whether in the business organization, whether in institutions, whether in hospitals, why do people use memos or what you call memorandum? Number one, they use it to inform people about an occurrence that is a, that has just happened in the organization. So sometimes there might be a newsworthy information that the, the management needs, uh, needs the, the people in the organization to know or to be aware of. So sometimes they might use memo to inform. A memo can also be used to inquire. You use memos because you want to inquire about something. There's a certain uh, information you're looking for. There's a certain feedback you're looking for. Sometimes you can also use memos. And you can also use memos to remind people, maybe remind people of a certain meeting that was scheduled in the near that. And uh, maybe you feel people have been so busy and you need to remind them of that specific meeting. Sometimes you can use memos to remind. Memos are also used to instruct. They are used to give instructions to the workers in the organization. And lastly, they can also be used to communicate ideas, opinions, and any kind of useful information within the organization. So these are the main purposes of a memorandum or the main reasons as to why organizations would wish to use a memo. So that is 5B. And then lastly, we have 5C. And 5C, uh, we are looking at steps of listening process five steps of listening process. 
So listening is something that is very important when it comes to communication because without listening, then that means communication. <coughs> Sorry for that. Without listening, that means communication becomes ineffective. It's the duty of those people or the parties in the communication to be attentive, to give an ear to one another for communication to be effective. Otherwise, it will be a whole lot of mess. So what are the five steps? For you to listen and understand, it's not just a one thing off or a one time thing, but it's just a process. Listening is a process. It's not a matter of giving an ear and getting the information and that's all. No, listening takes place chronologically or listening takes place in a process. And this process is made up of five stages as you can see. We have receiving, understanding, remembering, evaluating, and then responding. That is why we say it is not a one thing time. It's something that takes place in stages. And that is why it's called a process. So the first step in the listening process, we have receiving. Yes, receiving is more of hearing what the person is saying. After receiving and hear what the person says, the next thing, understand. This person has said this. I basically had it. Now, have I understood the content or not? Because the moment you hear, you receive, you hear. But if you do not understand, already communication becomes at standstill. So receive through hearing and then understand what this person tries to say or what this person is meaning through this message. After understanding, then are you in a position to remember? Almost everything that this person said. If you can remember, then evaluate that information. What's good, you retain. What's not good, set aside. And then after you evaluate, then that means you can go ahead and give a favor. What we now call responding, as you can see here. Yeah? So with, in, in the communication classes, we did about, uh, or we talked about a communication process. And he said for communication to be complete, feedback has to be there, especially if it's a communication that requires feedback. If feedback is absent, then that means the communication process is incomplete. So that is why you see here, the last step of listening process becomes responding. Because you've received the communication, hearing, you've understood the communication, you've basically articulated and you can remember everything that was communicated, you've evaluated that communication, in a way that you know what was uh, the right thing that you need to absorb and what you don't need to absorb. And then lastly, give feedback, depending on the evaluation stage that you did. So when all these things happen in a procedural way or in a chronological way, as I've explained, that is what we call the listening process. And that is why it is very right to say listening is not a one-time thing, but rather it is a process because it will take you to a number of stages in order for you to reach to the, the, the stage where you can be able to give feedback or can be able to respond. So much details are given here. You can see we cannot read everything, but at least I've given a good summary on the listening process. So at your free time, you can keep on uh, watching uh, this video so that you can even understand more about the listening process. So that is our fifth question. That is the end of our fifth question. Uh, see you in our next question, which will be number number six. Thank you.